Many towns along Maine's Kennebec River include a water street, but Water Street and Gardner stands out for maintaining much of its 18th century character. Tucked in the center of this historic downtown, there stands an impressive four-story brick building that takes you back in time. This huge edifice has a simple name carved in red sandstone, Johnson Hall, 1864. Its story is rich and complex, and it's a timeline for the city of Gardner. After heading west to seek his fortune in the gold rush, Benjamin Johnson returned to his hometown in the 1850s and bought one of Gardner's finest hotels. He renamed it the Johnson House and served as its proprietor through the Civil War. The hotel included a modest livery stable just next door, which Johnson determined to convert into a proper hall that would accommodate and draw gatherings and audiences from up and down the Kennebec River. Work began in April 1864. It was to be a four-story building with livery stables below and a grand hall with a gallery in the upper floors. That December, Johnson Hall officially opened with a great affair with speeches, singers, and the Gardner Cornet Band. 500 people attended. Johnson Hall immediately became the showcase of the Kennebec Valley. It maintained a steady calendar of dances, formal balls, concerts, and plays, and it was constantly booked for special occasions. In the winter months, the newspapers carried details of endless social dances and holiday celebrations. Benjamin Johnson was determined to attract first-class entertainments, and he did. National touring companies brought theatrical and musical and novelty performances from near and far. In 1883, Johnson installed a hardwood floor in the hall, and it added indoor roller skating to its popularity. In October 1888, he held the grand opening of a truly remarkable transformation. He had removed the livery stables and modernized the lower floors to house stores and shops, and the upper floors he had converted from a simple hall into a truly grand opera house. The opera house drew audiences from up and down the valley for world-class concerts and theater and continued to host local and regional gatherings. When Benjamin Johnson died suddenly in 1903, his widow Henrietta quickly took over. She oversaw the Opera House through disasters, including terrible fires in 1904, 1922, and 1932. She also changed with the times, bringing in moving pictures and the early silent films. After the fires and through the Depression, more changes came to the hall. The sweeping balcony and 600 seats were replaced with rising tiers and a state-of-the-art projection booth, along with a new, larger picture screen, and with them came the first talking pictures to be shown in Gardner. The new theater remained a popular attraction for over two decades. Eventually, television took over for entertainment, and in 1959, like many downtown theaters, Johnson Hall closed its doors and dimmed its lights to a dwindling audience. Eventually, in the 1980s, a small group of committed locals began an attempt to revive Johnson Hall. They staged shows and brought in audiences, but the hall leaked so badly that folks had to bring their umbrellas on stormy days. In 1985, Benny and Denise Reel, along with a handful of local citizens, purchased Johnson Hall. They created a teaching space and studio theater on the ground floor, the site of the many dry goods stores once upon a time. The studio theater opened in 1991 and has operated continually ever since. It has seen some of its own improvements over the years and now houses a performance space with over 100 seats and continues to bring outstanding performing arts to Gardner, including dance, comedy, music, movies, and live theater. It has a core of hardworking and energized volunteers and the many supporters of Johnson Hall have eagerly taken on the challenging process of fundraising to ensure a future for Maine's oldest surviving opera house. <laughs>